do not start a business in 2022 or 2023. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. Now, um, I'm on my morning walk here. It's not even 7 a.m. in Scottsdale. Still got the bed head going on and everything. But I wanted to record this video because I was listening to an audio book from Tim Cook. It's called Build. He's the CEO of Apple, by the way. And he was saying to not start a business. And instead, if you're actually starting off, look into getting a job. And his reason was the same exact reason that I've been saying this for years. So I wanna share this with you. For you to understand it, I wanna tell you my story of how I really went from zero to uh, having two companies. One does about a million a month, the other one about two million a month. So we're gonna pay over $30 million this year. I, I think if you understand my story of how I started and got to where I am today, you would understand why starting a business in the beginning might not be the best move. So for me, I was uh, in the process to go to medical school when I decided to suddenly call my parents, tell them I wasn't gonna do it and drop out. For whatever reason, I won't get into uh, the exactness of why, but I uh, had this realization that if I really wanted to make money and have purpose and fulfillment and all of these things, I knew in my DNA, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but in my DNA, I had to do something that was kind of outside of the matrix, you know, because I was very, very much in the uh, good old go to college, get in debt, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an accountant type of thing. And so I was going to go be a doctor and I realized I was just doing it for all the wrong reasons. You know, I was doing it for status and prestige and money opposed to doing it for actually um, the reason you should be doing it, which is it should be your calling. I mean, you're out there helping people and changing lives. Like it should be what you want to do, not something for status. So thankfully I realized that and I was like, well, I'm going to start a business. Now the problem was I had no experience. So I just kind of stayed in college. I stayed bartending at this job I was at. And uh, I just kind of winged it. And I started this blog, started blogging. Obviously, that wasn't successful. Bought some courses. Eventually started a Facebook ads agency for e-commerce and high-ticket coaching brands. And I got that to a couple hundred thousand a year, but I wasn't making any money. So like money was coming in, but more money was leaving than coming in. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But long story short, I ended up, uh, I made a deal with myself that once my bank account was below 800 bucks, I was going to just go get a job. And for me, I got a sales job. A lot of you guys know that, right? I got into remote closing. And I, for a lot of these clients I was uh, advertising for, you know, they were high ticket coaching brands. I would see the money their salespeople were making. And I was like, man, I think I could easily do that. So I got into that. You know, I was, when I started, I was horrible. I went one for 30 on my calls. I almost got fired multiple times. But I eventually built a skill and built up and, you know, really became the top uh, salesperson on the first team I was on and the subsequent teams. And one of the things that's really important, and this is what um, Tim Cook is saying, and I totally agree, is the pivotal moment in my career was when I really surveyed the industry and I found the most popular, like fast growing, exciting startup in my specific industry that was really kind of building the company that I almost wish I could have built. And I went and worked for them. And these are people I looked up to, I looked as mentors, but they were also at the ground floor. You know, they were probably at about 40 to 50 people. So they were 40 to 50 people at the time, about 3 million in revenue. But I could see, hey, these guys could easily be 10 to 20 million pretty quickly, 100 plus company pretty quickly. And so I was like, man, I'm going to go and uh, get at the ground floor of this thing and become the top salesperson. That's exactly what I did. And I'll tell you this, you know, now I have a, uh, you know, sales recruiting and training company, leveraging a lot of the skill sets I learned as a salesperson, right? And building sales teams, all that stuff. But I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I had not made that decision. Because what happened in the experience of being a part of that company and just uh, experiencing so much growth is I really got to see by osmosis how a real great company operates. You know, their day-to-day -day operations, how they run their sales team, how they run their marketing team, how they budget their advertising. I mean, just like all these different things, even how they run their legal, how they run their operations. like. All these things you just kind of pick up and you, and you learn by osmosis over the years. And so when I went to build my own company that was unrelated, it was in a different, you know, a different offer and everything. But when I went to build my own company and my own kind of specific uniqueness, I uh, had so much experience to leverage off of. Here's the thing is if I was to start all over again, number one, I would find an industry that you're passionate about and find a company that you really look up to. Maybe it's you know, somebody who's your hero, Maybe somebody, it's like a company you really like, you're like, man, that company's just so cool. Like I told a girl who was, uh, I used to date, she was into fashion and she uh, like narrowed down like three fashion brands she really, really liked. I was like, you should go work for those companies. And then as you're working for those companies, what you want to do, I mean, just get in somewhere, but identify 
what is a specialized skill I can build at this company that is high, highly, highly valuable that eventually I can turn maybe into my business or to my career, to my purpose, and just really try to build that skill. And even if you pick the wrong skill, you can always move on to another skill because a lot of entrepreneurship and work and everything is just building skills and accumulating these skills over time. So for me, I was able to get in at the ground floor of a great company. I was able to build this skill of sales and sales team and all of these things. They had a great sales team at the time. And you know, I took that skill and then they, they were obviously helping coaches, consultants and agencies and stuff like that. I started helping salespeople and sales teams. So I started a different company, but leveraging the specialized knowledge I had accumulated. And um, I think for y'all starting off, that is the number one thing I would do is you gotta look to where the party is at and go, go be a part of something very, very exciting that has a huge mission. They can offer you amazing amounts of growth and you're really getting paid to learn and, and look to build these skills. And you know what's funny is like, I'm obviously giving a lot of credit to this company I used to work for, but at the same time, uh, and this is not, you know, I'm not talking crap about the company by any means, but like with any company, there was things I liked and there was a lot of things I didn't like. And so just as much valuable as the lessons that were, like I learned great lessons, I also learned lessons of what not to do and mistakes that I think I thought they were making or in you know, hindsight they made that I swore to never repeat my own company. And so I think that's just so important. And if you do not, you know, I coach so many entrepreneurs who have never really been, had a job or a real job, like within their industry before they start their own company. And they're at a serious disadvantage because they just don't even know what like a 10 million or a $20 million year company looks like in their, uh, in their industry. So if I had to do all over again, you know, if I was into, let's say, real estate investing and I wanted to go wholesale, you know, I would go work for my buddy, Josiah, who's one of the top wholesalers in the, in the entire world and in the country at Keekly. And I would try to be on either the acquisition or the dispo side. And I would just try to figure out and learn as much as I can, getting paid to essentially accumulate specialized knowledge. You know, if I wanted to start a software company, I would learn development. And then I would go work for a badass company that was in an industry that I really liked helping their developers. So hopefully this makes sense, guys. That's why I wouldn't start a business in 2022. Instead, what I would do is find an industry you're passionate about, get a job and focus on really, it's not just the job, but developing specialized knowledge in that uh, industry, right? And it, and it doesn't always have to be marketing, sales, copywriting. It can, all, it can very, very much be team, culture, um, you know, development, product, I mean, it can be so many different things. You know, it can be finance specific to that industry. It can really be anything and everything. Uh, fulfillment. So it's a little thought for you today. Hopefully that helps. Peace out.